How's it going guys? Today I wanted to talk to you guys about being a student in college and majoring in computer science. Uh, when I think about my journey, I've graduated college almost, I'm going to be coming up on four years now, which is really just insane to think this coming May. And so it sort of made me think about what I wish I had known back in college. And I think a lot of the times when I when I think about things in retrospect, I always think about the things I could have done better. I always think about the things that I wish I would have known back then. And so I wanted to talk to you guys about my regrets as a computer science student and the, the four or five things that I really wish that I did that I think would have made me a lot better engineer today. And hopefully you guys can take these tips and if you guys are in college now, you guys can start them right now. Or if you're not in college yet, you guys can actually think about them for when you are in college because I think they would be really beneficial for you. So with that being said, today I wanna to talk to you guys about the things that I wish I knew before majoring in computer science. So the first thing that I wish I really did back in college as a computer science student is I really, really wish that I took the time to learn the fundamentals of programming really, really well. And while this sounds pretty obvious, I think that it really goes overlooked a lot of times. And I think I definitely made that mistake when I was back in college learning how to program. And I very quickly realized, and especially, you know, hindsight's 2020, but especially in retrospect, I realized that a lot of the foundation that I stood on or that I built off of in college was pretty flimsy in, in reality. And so I think if I would have taken time to learn how variables work, what functions are, why they matter, object-oriented programming versus procedural programming, polymorphism, inheritance, abstraction, all these different concepts and all these different tools that you have in programming. I think if I took the time to really understand why each of those different topics and more are very valuable and how I can use them and why they're used in programming, I think I would have been a lot better student inevitably. And I think I would have taken a lot of those learnings and understandings and have been able to take them forward with me to apply to other things that I learned in later classes. So in that respect, computer science reminds me a lot of math. I think a lot of being good at math really boils down to knowing the basics and knowing the fundamentals really, really well. And so, for example, if you're having trouble with addition, I really think that you're gonna have trouble with things like multiplication or division. and you know, I think that it really pays to learn the fundamentals so that you can build off of that foundation and learn more complicated topics. So if you guys are in computer science programs right now, or you guys are interested in computer science, I cannot stress it enough, spend time on the fundamentals and make sure that before you do anything else, you guys understand those building blocks of programming because they're very, very important and they're gonna make your life a lot easier if you understand them later on. My next recommendation for anyone who's in a computer science program right now, and I wish someone would have told me this because I, sounds ridiculous, but I basically had no idea or I did not think about the consequences of doing this, but I really recommend taking all your required classes as fast as possible and take them back to back, right? So don't take any semesters off. I would really take computer science classes every single semester that you can. And ideally you're going to take uh, classes that build on the previous class. You're going to take topics that build on previous topics because otherwise you're going to lose that foundation. You're going to lose that knowledge that you're learning in previous semesters because you're not going to be applying it. And so unless you're applying it outside of school, you're really going to start losing that knowledge that you work so hard to gain. And so I say that I wish someone told me that because I actually made a terrible mistake of not taking classes back to back. So what I did was my freshman fall, I took a programming class that was in Python and it taught me all about programming and procedural programming specifically and just syntax and language and etc right so it taught me all about python effectively and programming and then i took a java class and the java class focused way more one on java because i learned python the semester before and then also focused on object oriented programming specifically as opposed to procedural programming and while that was great what i did not do so that was my spring semester the following fall semester of my sophomore year i did not take a programming class and so effectively between my Java intro class in my next class, which was my, which was my data structures and algorithms class, which I did terribly in, uh, I had a whole year and I did not do really, unfortunately, I did not do any sort of programming really between it. I did not do any internships. I did not do any like my own of uh, my own personal projects. I did not apply programming really at all outside of school at that point. So that was a huge problem, right? So I went from barely understanding programming to trying to learn about object and object oriented design and then forgetting all that information and then just getting slammed by data structures. So I really don't recommend that. And then I made the, again, a horrible mistake, but again, I, I guess I, there were trade-offs to it. I decided to go abroad and so I went and studied abroad in London uh, the following fall, so my junior fall. 
And that was great, but there were actually no computer science classes. The only class I could take was linear algebra. And while that applied, while that counted for a computer science credit, I did not do any sort of programming unless it was on my own. So again, I, I had big gaps in the times that I took between classes, and that was not helpful when I actually had to learn that material again, or understand how objects worked, or understand what a linked list was, or any of these different things, right? It was like I was all of a sudden just at level five, and I had totally forgotten everything that was under level five, because I had lost that foundation that I had built up. I really, really recommend that if you guys can, take all your required classes back to back and really try not to have any gaps in terms of the semesters that you take off of computer science classes because I really think, based on my experience, it only hurts and it, it really never helped. So try and do them as fast as possible and try and take them all back to back if you can. The next thing that I really wish I knew as a computer science major was I wish I knew to pay attention to internships earlier. And this is not something that was really on my radar. This is not something that I had really thought about. And it really should have been something that I did think about because going into college, I, I guess this was sort of a common theme, but I didn't really think about what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do programming or consider programming because I knew I liked video games and that's how you make video games. <laughs> so that was really the extent to which I thought about programming. And I, I really should have thought more about jobs and applying to internships. And unfortunately I didn't. And the reason why I say I wish I did was because now when I think about interviewing and now when I think about all these jobs that you might want to try and get, whether you're in or out of college, it just becomes exponentially easier if you're used to the process, if you've done it before, if you have internships under your belt. And in retrospect, again, hindsight is 2020, but I really think that in retrospect, if I had applied to internships, if I had practiced leak code, if I had done a bunch of other things, I think I would have been in a lot better position to have basically any job coming out of college because one, I would have been prepared, right? I know the process, I know what to study, I know what the interviews entail. And on top of that, I have the experience to actually get my foot in the door and get those different interviews with those different companies. So if you guys can, I recommend as soon as possible, one, and I'm now, now I'm trying to be specific with what you should do actually about, you know, getting internships and jobs, because I think these are the things that I didn't think about. First thing you want to do is really just make a resume, right? Make some sort of piece of paper that explains who you are, what you've done and what you can do on a job. And I understand that at first, you know, it's going to be pretty bare bones. You're not going to have a lot of stuff to fill up the page. That's okay, right? Companies are going to know that that's where you have to start. Everyone has to start somewhere. And so that's also why it's important to try and do well in school because oftentimes it's all companies have to judge you off of at first. If you don't have a job, how do you get a job? It's kind of like a catch 22. So if you guys can at least show them that you're taking these classes, if you know about data structures, um, if you've done some sort of algorithms course or you created this side project or you have this website, right? You have to show them and maybe you do well in school so you get good grades. I didn't. <laughs> Um, but hopefully you can show them, you know, that you do, do get good grades, that you have a resume, you built projects and, you know, you're worth taking a chance on effectively. So the first thing is to have a piece of paper that says who you are, right? Make a resume, apply to a lot of jobs is my next tip. Definitely apply to tons and tons of jobs. It's all a numbers game, especially at the beginning when you don't have experience. And then the third thing is just do yourself a favor and do leak code problems. Cause that's the, the reality of the situation we're in. Almost all these companies ask some sort of algorithmic coding problem that you have to solve. So you might as well be prepared for that. You know, I wish that that was something that I had done way back when, because I think that if I had started practicing back then, you know, again, I would have had so many different options for the jobs that I, I could have gotten or the companies I could have went to. Again, not because it's rocket science, but just because you prepare. If you spend time preparing, you're probably going to land up land in a pretty good place if you just put the time in and work hard. So make that resume, apply to those jobs, and start doing lead code. Literally, it sounds funny, but just set it as your home page. Every single day, every time you open your browser, it'll just remind you. Even if you don't do it right then and there, it will remind you to do something to start practicing. So my next tip, and this will kind of go hand in hand with the last one, but that is to find a mentor, right? So as much as I want to tell you guys every day my advice or what I think you should do or the things that I learned or the mistakes that I made, and you know, I'll try and answer comments, I'll answer DMs on Twitter and Instagram, make sure to follow me at Kevin Otten Jr. You know, I can't do that every single day. And, and as much as I want to, it's important for you guys to have someone in your day-to-day -day life, hopefully, or at least once a week or a few times a month, et cetera, that you can check in with and make sure that you're doing things that they recommend. And you're learning from their mistakes the same way that hopefully you'll learn from the mistakes that I've made. And so it's really important to have someone who you can constantly check in with, ideally who's already walked your path, right? The path you wanna go down. And they can kind of tell you, this is something you should do if you're serious about becoming a doctor. This is something that you should do if you're serious about, you know, I don't know, working at this company or getting an internship or 
literally anything, right? Raising your GPA, it does not matter. Whatever your goal is, make sure that you have someone, whether it's related to computer science or not, it could be about weightlifting, it doesn't matter. Have someone that you can look up to who you can check in with and make sure that you're taking all the right steps to get to where you wanna be. So have a mentor, find someone that you can talk to and that you can rely on and that you can look to for advice. Ideally, someone who's been in your shoes before and can, again, like I'm doing, look back and say, man, here are the things that I wish I would have done and you should do them. The last thing that I wish I knew when I was majoring in computer science was I wish I did not think that everything I was doing was impossible. And I think that has to do a little bit with who I am as a person. I think that had a lot to do with the fact that I never programmed before college. But unfortunately, I just thought everything was hard. And even if something wasn't, I made it out to be a bigger problem or a scarier problem than it actually needed to be. And so I think because of that, not only maybe was the subject hard or the material or the homework, but on top of that, I would just make it even harder because I would tell myself it was impossible. I would tell myself that it was going to take two days to do. I was going to tell myself that I had to go to every single office hour or read the whole chapter of the textbook to even understand how to start. And don't do that. Like that did me zero favors. It's not going to do you any favors, whether or not it's easy or hard for you. Don't make yourself think it's even harder than it is. Right. And I think that some of this has to do with public perception. I think some people think engineering is really hard. I think some people think writing code is really difficult, but don't, don't bring that baggage. Don't tell yourself that something's harder than it needs to be. Just sit down, do the work, take it piece by piece, right? Do one step at a time, one foot in front of the other, and you'll be totally fine. And again, that goes back to making sure that you have the right fundamentals, you have the right foundation to actually complete the project or to, to do well on the test. Or, you know, you also, also have to put in the work, obviously, but just make sure that you are not making things worse than they, they seem. All right, guys, so those are some of the things that I wish that I knew back when I was a computer science major in college. I'd love to hear what you guys think. What is some advice that you wish you had from someone when you were a computer science student? Be sure to leave it in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys in the next one. Spend a hundred on my watch